Hello dear friends, this is a case of a 66 year old uh, female patient uh, uh, with a history of uh, gastric bond, as you can see here, there is a gastric bond, a uh, previous history of uh, small bowel obstruction and uh, readmitted with uh, abdominal pain, distension and uh, abdominal x-ray showed dilated bowel loops. Now let's have a look to the images. I will scroll the images uh, from up to down so you will have your first impression. Uh, when we examine cases like this we have to see where, if, first of all, if there is any bowel obstruction and uh, where the stenotic and transitional point is to identify the cause, etc. First of all, we have to see if there is any large bowel obstruction or small bowel obstruction. Starting from uh, the anal rectal region, we can see uh, that uh, the large bowel here, where my uh, my arrow goes, okay, it looks pretty good. There is no dilatation, no air fluid levels all over the large bowel. Here is a descending colon. Okay, so, uh, as a general rule, we have to see after that uh, what's going on with the terminal ileum. Roughly, we can see that, yes, there are some dilated uh, small bowel loops with, with some air fluid levels, but if we can see on the right side, there are some collapsed small bowel loops. Here is the uh, distal ileum, okay, the ileal loops here are collapsed, so the answer to the question is that uh, no, there is no uh, large bowel obstruction, there is small bowel obstruction some, somewhere in between the ileocecal valve and the small bowel. Actually, there are two methods to find the stenotic and transitional point. One is to start to follow and track the bowel from the dilated portion uh, to the periphery, or the opposite, to go to the collapsed small bowel loops and try to track them upwards and find the stenotic point. I will show you directly the stenotic point, which is actually here. So we will gain some time. All right. So, uh, proximally to that point, the rest of the small bowel is dilated. If we follow and track the small bowel step by step, okay, we can see that there is dilatation. Okay, with air fluid levels. Okay, we can see the images in coronal view as well to have a better uh, impression. Okay, and uh, if we go distally to that stenotic point, I will zoom in to see it again better. Okay, here's the stenotic point. If we go distally, we can see that all the small bowel loops are beautifully collapsed. Okay. Don't forget that uh, we must uh, examine the whole uh, gastrointestinal tract because there may be a second stenotic point which could represent an internal hernia. Uh, a couple of cases uh, uh, like this have been already described uh, in some other videos in my channel, so you can search for them. So, this stenotic point here is typical for an adhesional cause of small bowel obstruction. Let's have a look in coronal view.
here is the stenotic point. This, this is the dilated small bowel and this is the peripheral collapsed. Okay, we track the small bowel and it is continuously collapsed. Okay, and uh, when we uh, arrive back to the stenotic point, proximally to, the, to that level, the small bowel is dilated with air fluid levels. Okay, excuse me, this is the sagittal view, not uh, coronal. Okay, I will show you the coronal view just now. Here is the coronal view, and here exactly is the stenotic point. Adhesional cause of small bowel obstruction. It's good to have a general look in this interesting case, and uh, you can see the dilated small bowel. And uh, I marked the stenotic point, so you will be familiarized with uh, pathologies like this. Dear friends, thank you for watching. If you like my channel uh, and my videos, you can subscribe, so you will be notified the next time I will upload a new video. Thank you and see you soon.